you've known um, Joe Biden for a long time personally, and I'm wondering, and you're there in Washington, D.C. right now and have been right through January 6th and the rest, what, what, what has surprised you most about his first few months in the White House personally? Um, well, first of all, being here on January 6th was absolutely horrific. It's something I never expected to see in my lifetime. I was here on 9-11 and walking toward the dome of the Capitol uh, where the Intelligence Committee was housed and where we were about to hold a meeting and which everyone thinks was the intended target of the fourth plane that went down in Pennsylvania. So that got my attention. This was worse. And, and now that the, uh, a lot of uh, cable news is putting all the footage together and playing it back over and over again, it's, it's more terrifying to watch it again uh, somehow. Uh, Joe Biden wasn't president then, and um, uh, but what what surprised me about his presidency? Number one, he's much more hands-on as a leader than I than I fully understood. It's coming out now how he runs his meetings and what he does. Uh, but number two, and I love this, he's really enjoying the job. And you know, you learn this in politics 101. I was in Congress for nine terms. You got to enjoy it. I mean, there are really hard aspects of it. You got to take a punch and you got to enjoy what you're doing. You got to connect to people. And he is still doing the retail piece uh, very well in spite of the enormous pressures on him. I mean, as vice president under Obama, this is a guy that is most personally aware of what the job is, means and does. So from that perspective, no surprises for him. Yeah, and no, I don't think vice president is president. I think sitting behind that desk uh, and uh, having, the, having the buck stop with him uh, is very different. And I think he fills out the job very well, better than I expected. Not to say I wasn't excited about his election. I was excited about his election. Uh, but to say that, uh, com again, comparing him to his predecessors, he has uh, a dimension they didn't have. Um, he has the experience exposure to Congress, and he has the foreign policy file, which they did not have. All four of them. I'm talking about Clinton, Bush, 43, Obama, and Trump. Biggest, um, biggest success so far for six months? Uh, well, uh, I hadn't thought about it that way, but I would say picking the A team for foreign policy and then having a very successful week in Europe and not over, over inflating expectations, but doing the right things and building the trip toward Russia at the end. I know I've read you and heard you say uh, the Russia trip got too much attention, uh, the Russia summit meeting. I agree that it did, but I, I also think that putting it in the first trip was the, the right thing to do. And with the G20 coming up, there's a chance that he could also meet with Xi. And I, I think it's important soon to engage with foreign leaders hopefully with some record of success behind him in terms of his legislative agenda in Congress. That will really help. Biggest mistake so far? Um, I, I think, you know, people will throw tomatoes at me, but I think he needs to give uh, bipartisanship more of a chance. And I think he's uh, dropped a few things. Uh, Shelley Moore Capito was meeting with him on infrastructure, Republican from uh, West Virginia. Susan Collins was leading the meetings on the first uh, uh, COVID package. And I think he should have let those conversations go on longer. I'm not sure why he stopped them. I'm not saying that something isn't replacing them, but I, in both cases, uh, I thought these are very capable people and I, I'm not sure why he dropped those conversations as fast as he did.